Hi everyone, and welcome to an introductory video on how to make gradients in InDesign. In this lesson, we'll learn step by step the basics of how to create a basic gradient and how to use them. So let's get started by creating a new document in InDesign by clicking the Create New button on the side here. So let's click on that. And then you can choose one of the default options for our document size. Let's go ahead and choose this default document here and click on Create. And this will give us a blank canvas to work on and experiment creating our gradients. To create a gradient in InDesign, you must first have access to both the gradient panel, which you can get by going to Window, and then going to Color, and then clicking on Gradient here. So now you can see that the gradient panel has been has appeared now on our screen. And we also need to access the gradient tool, which we can use by clicking on the tool here over on the left or by pressing the G button on the keyboard. Now the gradient panel here is used to define the type of gradient and the colors. And the gradient tool over on the left here on the toolbar is how we are going to use and apply the gradient on our objects. Now, by default, the gradient will, de the gradient will be displayed uh, as a black and white gradient as displayed by the gradient bar here and on the gradient square here. Now, in order to use this gradient, we need an object to apply it on. So let's go ahead and go to the Shapes tool over on the toolbar on the left here. So I'm just going to use the Rectangle tool here by pressing the button here or by pressing M on the keyboard. And I'm just going to create a small square shape here, like so. Now let's make sure that it's a basic color. So over on the right here in properties, we want to make the fill to a black, like so. And we want to remove the stroke. So press the click on the stroke button here and let's make the weight zero to remove this stroke, like so. Cool. Now that we've got a basic shape, what we want to do now is we want to apply the gradients onto it. So let's make sure that it's selected. So I'm just going to click on the selection tool here and select our shape. And now using the gradient tool, we can either click on it or press G on the keyboard. We can now click on our square, like so. Excellent. Now straight away you'll see that this will apply the gradient onto our square. And this is def defined by the gradient panel over here. Now another way that you can use the gradient tool is by clicking and dragging it across the object, like so. So clicking and dragging across the object will also apply the gradient on it. Now this can also allow you to choose an angle for your gradient. So if you went and clicked on it via the uh, corner to corner like so, you can see that we can also define an angle to it. Cool. Now keep in mind that by using the gradient tool in this way, the start color and the end color is defined by the click of the mouse. So for example, if I click on the very edge of the square here, this will be the starting color of our gradient, which in this case is the white. So that's where the white color will be at its lightest. Now by dragging it across the shape, the point at which I release the mouse will be the point where the end color will start, which is the black color. So this will be where the black color will be at its darkest. So let's go ahead and see how that turns out. Cool. Now let's go ahead and look what happens when I repeat the steps again, except this time I will use a larger area. So I'll start the mouse click here and I'll end the mouse click here. So let's go ahead and see what happens here, like so. Cool. 
Now you'll see now that the square object doesn't have such a defined gradient. So let's go ahead and compare it to what we had before again. So you'll see now on this side of the shape it's quite clearly very black and here it's quite clearly very white. But if I do this again it's more of a grey tone here except now we do have a lighter shade of grey on the left hand side and a darker shade of grey on the right hand side. Now this is because the start and end colors are much further away. So if we increased the size of our square here and did the same thing again, you'll see now this is where our end color is and this is where our start color is. Now that we know how to use the gradient tool, let's define the colors of the gradient. So to do this, we must first open up the swatches. So you can see the swatches panel up here. Now, if it's not available here, we can access it by going over to Window, and then go to Color, and then click on Swatches. Once you have the swatches panel open, you need to select a color for the swatch. So let's say, for example, this blue color here and then click and drag it from the swatches panel and then drop it in the color stop over here in our gradient, like so. So you'll see now here we have a blue color in our gradient. Now to define the ending color, we have to do the exact same steps. So let's choose another color here. So let's say this pink color click and drag it and then apply it onto the color stop like so. Cool. Now once the colors have been defined you can choose to adjust the location of the starting point and of the end point by simply clicking and dragging it left and right like so. So let's click and drag it left and right like so along the gradient bar. And you can do the same with the blue color, now, like so. Cool. So let's go ahead and click on these until you're happy with the results. And now to edit the look of the gradient further, you can also adjust the location of the midpoint, which is represented by this small little diamond icon here. Now this is where the gradient displays an even mix of both the starting and ending colors. So to do this again, just click and drag this diamond along the gradient bar, like so. Excellent. Now you'll see as I sort of edit the gradient here, this is also applying onto our shape, as long as the shape has also been selected. So let's go ahead and move these stops back to the left and the right and move our midpoint back into the middle so you can change the location here so right now if we want it into the middle we want to add 50 percent like so excellent now we can also add more colors to the gradient now to do this we just need to simply click and drag these swatches here so let's click and drag these swatches and then just simply add them onto our gradient like so and then let's add another one and let's add another one, like so. Cool. Now in order to delete a color stop, simply click on it and then drag the stop down until it disappears. Excellent. Now another way to adjust the angle of the gradient is by using the angle box here. So let's go ahead and enter a value of 45 to see what we get. And you'll see now straight away the 45 degrees angle has been applied to our gradient, which is inside our object. Awesome. Now to save a new gradient that you have created, you must add it to the swatches panel here. So make sure that we have selected our object. So select our object here like so. And you'll know that it's been selected by the fill color here. So you'll see the fill color has got our blue and pink gradient on it. And once it's been selected, 
make sure that the swatches panel is open and then click on the new swatch button like so and then straight away you'll see that it has saved our gradient as a swatch called new gradient swatch by default now we can double click on this and now we can choose a new name for this so let's name this blue pink like so and then click OK awesome now you can use this gradient whenever you wish so if we had a blue shape here like so just simply click on that shape and then click on the swatch to apply the gradient excellent and that's it for this tutorial have fun creating gradients in Illustrator and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus